As we approach the Chinese Grand Prix, it's time to talk about upgrades as the development race is heating up. Formula 1 returns to Shanghai after four years and it will be the season's first sprint race weekend. So teams have planned to introduce significant upgrades and I'll give you all the information regarding these set upgrade packages as well as what the big and small teams are bringing here to China this weekend, which could potentially shuffle the pecking order. Let's open this video with what teams would be bringing to China specification wise. McLaren are waiting till Miami for their season's first upgrade package according to the team themselves. The Woking based squad have started the 2024 season better than the 2023 campaign. But considering where they left off in 23, the McLaren cars are a bit off the pace. And the team believes this upgrade package at Miami won't be enough to close the gap to Ferrari. But they believe these upgrades will push them in the right direction. So far, McLaren have not brought anything huge. They have made changes to their rear wing to try and shed off some drag, but nothing major. So we hope McLaren's Miami package does well. Hopefully it exceeds expectations and gives them the chance to close the gap to Ferrari and Red Bull. Looking at the team's prospects for China, I believe the McLaren will struggle massively around the circuit sectors 1 and 2, which has long, slow speed corners. Slow speed cornering has been a problem for McLaren last season, and that weakness is more than apparent this season. So it is going to be a tough time for the Woking based squad at Shanghai. Aston Martin introduced their first significant upgrade package of the season at the Japanese Grand Prix. The team introduced a significantly overhauled side pods design and a new floor specification. The results were really promising, at least from Alonso's side. The Aston car's race pace significantly improved, apparent from the better stint Alonso did at Suzuka. The AMR24 with the upgraded package now is close to the McLaren car in terms of race pace, but still they have significant work to do. Considering the Aston's car's performance throughout the first four races, the AMR24 has shown great prowess in slow speed corners, which is excellent news for the race at China. The AMR23 was very strong in this segment, and the AMR24 has shown its pace around long slow speed corners. Moving on to Mercedes, the Silver Arrows have been struggling a lot. The first four races have exposed the W15's weakness around high speed corners, and the team in general have really struggled to get a proper read on the car. But the W15's strengths have been around low and medium speed cornering, similar to the Aston Martin. So China could be an interesting Grand Prix for the Silver Arrows. In terms of packages, both Aston Martin and Mercedes will retain their specs for Japan, the medium to high downforce specs. Considering Shanghai's track layout, it would make sense to opt for a lower downforce wing, something in between medium and low downforce, as the track has two very long straights. But sectors 1 and 2 are dominated with corners, specifically long, slow speed corners. Downforce will become handy in those sectors, specifically in the race, as Shanghai is one of those circuits with high tyre degradation. So teams will have to make a compromise between downforce and drag, but I believe Aston and Mercedes will retain their downforce packages from Japan. Moving on to Ferrari, the prancing horses could be bringing new parts to China. From Bahrain up until Japan, the Italian team has made minimal changes to the SF24 in terms of upgrading the car, but has still kept up pace with a significantly upgraded RB20. But for China, Ferrari might be introducing a new part in the form of a higher downforce rear wing. In the reported changes to the Japanese Grand Prix, Ferrari had listed a new high downforce rear wing specification, but that never made it onto the car. So potentially, we could see this wing specification being used at China, a track where some downforce would pay dividends in terms of both cornering pace and improved tyre degradation. Talking about the rest of the car, Ferrari will turn up to China with the same spec they ran at Japan, as the team has its upgrades lined up for Imola. In terms of the team's prospects for the Chinese Grand Prix, I expect Ferrari to do really well here this weekend. The SF24 has exceptional tyre degradation and has been very strong on low speed corners, evident from the Australian race performance. China also presents the possibility of tyres graining, which gives Ferrari the upper hand in terms of overall tyre management. Red Bull was one of those teams alongside Aston Martin who had significant upgrades at Japan. Red Bull start from where they stopped last season, working on upgrades related to cooling. The objective last year for the Austrian squad was to minimise performance losses caused by cars cooling, refining the cars bodywork related to cooling, such as the radiator inlets. Despite the RB20's conceptual overhaul, the team's development path is still the same. Red Bull introduced two new cooling inlets near the halo, while closing off two outlets around the engine cover. 
The aim here is to use positive pressure points around the car's bodywork to try and manipulate the airflow to generate downforce. This was quite a significant upgrade package, and Helmut Marco mentioned that the package is working as intended and has added about a tenth worth of performance. As far as the Chinese Grand Prix is concerned, this should be another strong race for the Austrian team. The RB20 has great efficiency, has loads of downforce for cornering speed, so we can expect a dominant showing from the Red Bull drivers. Their only competitors could be Ferrari, as China could present graining problems similar to Australia, which makes the Chinese race a contest worth watching. Now let's move on to the big leagues, the big upgrades that are coming to China, starting from Haas. The VF24 has exceeded expectations and has showed in some stellar performances. Best example is Japan, where the Haas car had good tyre degradation, whereas in the previous VF23 was a butter shredder. Haas were never supposed to perform good at Japan. After a poor start from Hülkenberg due to a stalled clutch dropping down the field, the German came through the field finishing P11. This proves the VF24 has a strong base, similar to its superior Italian counterpart SF24. And at China, the team is planning to build upon that solid foundation. According to Formula Uno, Haas will be bringing a new underfloor, alongside minor updates to the car's bodywork, to the radiator inlets to be specific. The report further calls the upgrade to be RB19 inspired, the deliberate package for the fifth round of the season will include not only the bottom, but also a minor update to the bodywork, called refinement of the current design. Very Phil Red Bull RB19 with regard to bellies. The report further states that this upgrade will land only on Kevin Magnussen's car, due to shortage of spares, considering the Chinese race is of sprint weekend. There is a possibility of Hülkenberg getting the upgrades after the sprint race due to the new rules allowing, but that for now is a far-fetched scenario. Prospects for the Chinese Grand Prix, Haas has improved a lot year on year. The notable performance leap was noted in the high speed sections. The VF23 was notably stronger in the low speed corners, so the VF24 naturally should have improved or at least maintained that performance. So I think Shanghai will suit the Haas more than its midfield rivals, giving both Nico and Kevin the upper hand to try and score a point or two. Racing Bull are bringing an upgrade to China, a different sort of upgrade. From the first four races of the season, we have clearly seen that Daniel Ricciardo is struggling big time with the RB car. The Chinese upgrades is specifically focused on him, therefore, as the team are bringing a new chassis for the Australian. We have had similar instances where a chassis swap has given drivers confidence, Kimi Raikkonen being a huge example. So hopefully the new chassis gives more confidence to Daniel, as he is the experienced pair when it comes to China, between the Australian and Yuki, as this is the first outing for Yuki at China. So with all these upgrades, are you excited for the Chinese Grand Prix? Which team do you think will make the most gains with their respective upgrade packages? We are very much into your thoughts and perspectives in the comments section down below. And on your way down, don't forget to subscribe to the channel to get notified of our future uploads to keep yourselves up to date about the 2024 Formula 1 season.